The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Hello, folks. Welcome to today's abbreviated uh, version of the uh, Trader's Edge. Today is August the 20, uh, what is it, the 27th out there. So it is the Thirsty Thursday edition. I'm recording this show uh, between 8 and 8.30. Uh, Tommy will pick it up from 8.30 till uh, 9. And obviously, this is being replayed uh, and re uh, at uh, 1 p.m. during the normal slot out there. So my apology for, uh, for not letting you know, I think maybe just at the very end as I was going off the air yesterday that uh, I needed to use the morning segment here to get the show going. So we'll, look, we'll use this half hour here for me to go through all the charts, kind of the process that I uh, use and go through uh, each morning as I begin assembling uh, my very detailed uh, newsletter because we cover all of the futures contracts. That includes, includes all the commodities out there. Uh, and uh, so let me just kind of go through that process. So we'll get to uh, kind of stop the uh, normal opening, so to speak, because I didn't tell folks, uh, uh, you know, I don't know how many people are actually listening, listening in, but you can call if you've got a question, 877-927-6648. But we'll be back to normal programming on uh, Fantastic Friday. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get the uh, show started. So right now, as we speak, it's 8.08 .08 in the morning. You've got the, uh, so this is the first page that I take a look at when I'm up. You've got uh, uh, equity futures, Dow equity futures are off 77, NASDAQ is down uh, 40. If you just take a look at the percentage changes, really not that big of a deal, three-tenths of a percent uh, is what we're taking a look at out here. Then I move down and I take a look at the major international markets, what's going on in Asia. And it was a mixed bag out there. The Nikkei was off 82 points, the Hang Seng down 210, eight-tenths of a percent, and the uh, Shanghai was up 21, six-tenths of a percent. We see over in Australia, uh, its market, the uh, Aussie uh, 200, uh, closed higher by about two-tenths of a percent. And over in Europe right now, the DAX and the FTSE are, are both trading lower. Now, what does all that mean that they're trading lower? We'll go take a look at that because I always like to understand if there's topping patterns in play going on around the uh, globe out here. You've got gold right now is off six bucks. Silver's down 11 pennies out here. Natural gas is uh, up uh, four cents. We'll take a look at it, what it's doing. Uh, you got the 30-year uh, trading out at 178.11. That's up six ticks. Um, U.S. dollar index is up uh, just uh, slightly. So this is the first, in essence, table I look at to get a feel for what's going on inside the market. You can't see my other four screens that I have going, so I have to pull different things over so that you can get a feel for what I'm looking at. The next thing I do is I just uh, open up my, my little table. Uh, that automatically is always calculating for whatever time frames it is that I have listed here, my road momentum indicator top. So here you're looking at, a, it says 30 RMI. So I'm really looking at the short term area. Not that I don't look at the longer term, but here I've got a 30 minute, 120 minute, a five hour, and, and subscribers are getting all of these. So they understand where support and resistance is at for each of the time frames. Many traders uh, that subscribe to the service are intraday traders, so they're looking for these important levels of support or resistance or what type of top or bottoming signals here. When I just focus on the equity futures contracts, I know to go investigate right now the ES mini and the NQ because of the topping uh, pattern. They've got confirmed roads went to indicator top. So what I want to know, what you want to know, what inquiring mind wants, and wants want to know out there is, has price broken through key levels of support to anticipate that price would be moving lower or is this just nothing more than you know early morning overnight trading jostling around so so here since we already have that there's really two things for you and i to investigate let's let's do the the, the latter one first which is those those 30 minute charts here for the es mini so let's open this up and what do we know here we can see wave number seven that's letter so there were two topping signals last night when I identified the pattern, wave number seven, that's letter G, that's part of the Chapman wave, but it is not the Chapman wave. And then we can also see that, well, there's even, there's a third one, there's an A to B equals CD pattern. It looks like this. I'll go ahead and draw it in for you. Now, I can't, I don't have the A to B equals CD patterns automated. So that means I've always got to look at charts, just as you do, to try to pick up on any other patterns that are out here. So here we can see the A to B equals CD pattern. So several patterns that we're completing up at that high. Now, just because there's more than one, does that mean that this is, uh, oh my, goodness the end of the world no 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 that's not what it means 
just means there are pretty good odds were that there was going to be a top, and there was, and we can see that. And we can see that just through the way the market was communicating to you and I, because what the market does is it generates patterns over and over and over and over again. There are some charts where the patterns are schizophrenic. There are some people that are schizophrenic. That's just the way that things are, right? And so those are... Um, those are markets when we don't see any kind of patterns in there. We just step away from it because we can go take a look at something that does have a pattern. Now here we can see that price is traded down into support and support has not been broken. And that is the bottom of its profiles out here. Now if support were to be broken and you were to say, okay, Stevie, where's the downside? Because you can call me Stevie. That's okay. Where's the downside support level? Well, it happens to be the TD9 breakout level. And that was at 3441. There's a red horizontal line that gets drawn across the screen. That is a key level of support. If the ES Mini were to close below that, there would be the potential that it would be our first signal of a uh, change in trend uh, top out there. Now, we've got to go take a look at the daily to figure out, <clears throat> because there's a bearish reversal candle that we'll, we'll need to, well, I've got to, we've got to go take a look at the daily to see what that meaning might have. Is there a topping pattern that is in play out there? And I don't know the answer off the top of my head here. So let's go take a look at the 30-minute chart here for the NQ. Again, do the same thing. We're looking to see, so we knew about the topping signals. We knew about the patterns that are out there. Want to investigate it to see what, how to interpret the message of the markets. Here, we can see the uh, Rhodes, uh, Rhodes, uh, Rhodes momentum indicator top pattern that was confirmed with this bearish engulfing candle that formed out here. But price is still holding support. So here's what you know. When you take a look at this screen out here with regard to the futures and you see that things are trading lower, you don't know how to interpret it. If you're short, maybe you're licking your chops. If you're long, you're getting concerned out here. And all either party really needs to do is understand, hey, what's your topping pattern? In place okay there was that makes sense and then it has price broken through any levels of support and where are those levels of support and so we've taken a look at that in this stage here uh, in the uh, game we know that no key levels of support have been broken from an intraday standpoint so that's very helpful I mentioned we took a look at those international markets so let's go take a look at those because I what I immediately do is want to understand hey what's going on so let's just start with Europe right now since it's actively trading and if we take a look at the FTSE here's the FTSE so the same tools that are on my 30 minute chart or on my daily my weekly any time frame chart that is out there that way it makes it easy here's the td9 bottom that formed inside the footsie so price had broken through its breakout support level that's that red horizontal line 59.93.28 price is trading above that it's holding as support right now price needs to close below this bullish engulfing candle out here that price point by the way inside of the uh, FTSE that would be 58.5706 and if price were to close below that the FTSE would be telling you it's headed back to the March lows there's no other support not that there couldn't be some other support but there's no other major support on the daily time frame chart here for the FTSE but right now it's really neutral it's trading between Stevie's green red line two lines right it's trading between our horizontal breakout uh, uh, breakout uh, TD9 levels in its trading underneath Stevie's oscillator and change line. So it's really very neutral as we speak right now. So it doesn't have a ton of meaning. We do know that support is held. Let's go take a look at the uh, German DAX here as we close out this uh, first segment. What do we know? It's got a Rosemont indicator top. That pattern is still in play, but price is above Stevie's green line. So you could see more rally out here. And the key level of support that the uh, DAX needs to close below is 12, 535.90. That'll take price down to 10,677. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back with the early edition of today's Trader's Edge show. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So it's 818 in the uh, morning. I'm recording the uh, show here between 8 and 830 if you're listening live. So thanks so much for doing that. Just really taking you through really my process in the morning so that you can uh, uh, understand how I'm uh, how I'm getting the message of the markets from the uh, data, from the uh, chart information. So we just took a look at the ES Mini, the international markets. I'm not going to spend the rest of the time right now going and take a look at Asia out there. What I can share with you with regard to the Asian markets, even though they were mixed last night, they all have topping patterns that are in play as we speak. So does the European market, the DAX and the FTSE that we just took a uh, look at out there. Now, um, many of you know, if you listen, because you, you listen to the show out there, that I'm very cautious right now about the uh, markets. One of the reasons is, it's not me, it's the charts. Uh, you know, so all I'm doing is just reading the chart data. I am an absolute pattern recognition trader because these markets do make patterns. We've already discussed that and we take a look at that on the uh, charts out here. And so when those patterns are, and so I've created these tools so that in a snapshot, I can understand it's live data right now with regard to what's going on. Now I say it's live data, but we're not looking at futures, we're looking at ETFs. So this data here is really as of yesterday's close. But what this is taking a look at is, uh, you can see I've got this broken down. I've got major international markets and, e and all, all via ETFs. That way each of you can do this at home too. You've all got access to the ETF data. So this way, you don't have to worry about indices and exchanges and so forth. So here you can take a look. Now, you don't have the, the, the tools necessarily to tell you whether it's a Rhodes momentum indicator top or what our TD9 count is or what our Chapman wave count is. And the as you can tell, uh, yellow, pink, or not yellow, but pink and or light pink colors are telling us about a possible um, a top out here and bottom signals would be the uh, green highlighted area. So it becomes very easy for me to just focus in on what it is that I need to know about the market. So if we take a look at we've got the sectors inside the S&P and I've got other worldwide indices out here. So we have a pretty good feel for what the signals of the markets are. Now these RMI signals are signals. Some are signals, some are confirmed. Most are just signals as we speak right now. So signals are waiting for bearish reversal candles because the markets are stretched out there. And those patterns will change with daily uh, data. But it's the reason why I am uh, cautious out here. Now, if we take a look, that being said, 
we take a look at the equity futures out here uh, and we look at their daily profiles. What I can share with you, what I do know is that the Dow equity futures contract is trying. It continues to try to form a new profile. It just can't hold. So we have to go with the data that is on our screen right now. What we know is that the ES mini, the NQ and the Dow are each trading above the top of their profiles. The top of the profiles are where sellers are at. In the case of the NQ and the uh, Dow YM, both of those were bearish structured profiles, meaning the center line was closer to the top than the bottom. Whenever you get above a bearish structured profile, it is a strong momentum move. So we have to consider that the Dow right now has a strong momentum move on that. Well, let's go take a look at the Dow. Is there anything that we need to do, that traders need to be concerned with out here? Well, yeah. Price is still moving higher doing less relative energy. If there were to be a bearish reversal candle, it would then generate the RMI signal would uh, go from a, a signal to a confirm to a confirmation if there's a bearish reversal candle. And we need to see a close below Stevie's green line. It's called the oscillator unchanged line out there. When price is above that, tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero, folks, and that is a bullish condition. Now, this tells us that short of a top forming here inside the Dow, the price is going to target its breakdown level. Price oftentimes, when price is moving up, what you like to do is you like to buy it when price is pulled back to a breakout area. Well, where's the breakout area? The TD9s take care of that for you. And they work. They're magnificent out there. Learn this tool. Just sign up for Mastery Probability. You will learn it. There's an archive workshop that will teach you exactly how to do this. Here we can see the TD9 count topping pattern that formed out here back in the June time frame. And what did price do? It pulled back to support. The 24266 area. Well, it works just the opposite out here. And when you get through one, you go to the next and so on and so forth. Well, here we can see that price now is targeting its next resistance. We're just flipping the chart, so to speak, and that's at 29222. So if the, we do see a bearish reversal candle, we get a different uh, prognosis. Right now, support is held. Price should continue to move higher. The YM is trading above the top of its daily profile. But I do know there is some real resistance out here because I have seen it uh, several times during the evening and early this morning where there's a new profile that tries to form. I reset it to see if it's really taking hold or not. Now, the Russell 2000 is the weak link out here. It's trading below its bullish structured profile. As we pull over the Russell 2000 chart, here's what we're going to see. First, we're going to see wave number seven. That's letter G, so it's got a top. But look what the Russell 2000 actually did. It formed a Gartley buy pattern. Gartley buy pattern has got an A to B equals CD. That's what's really shown here on these green lines. And it's confirmed the A to B equals CD pattern must, must, M-U-S-T, be confirmed with a reversal candle. If the market's moving lower, it's got to be a bullish reversal candle. Then, when you do get a uh, buyable bottom, viable bottom pattern, you have to identify where is resistance. Well, resistance here first is Stevie's green line. That's at 1585. That's the first level of resistance. You've got support or resistance depending on where price closes at 1560. Price right now trading at 1559. So it's just below its support level out there. But two closes in a row below that 15 uh, 60, 90 level would then suggest price pulling back to 1467.80. Now, that would be confirmed with price closing below this, uh, uh, the support level established by that bull sash candle that, that confirmed this little Gertley buy. Now, what happens if price takes out 1585.40? Well, price would be back inside the range out here, and probably you'd take a, um, a look at a move up to the 1605 level. Now, remember, the Russell 2000 for its 30 minute time frame chart was not one that popped up on our screener. To say hey go take a look at it but we will take a look at it just so you can see what information it has out here now it formed its roads momentum indicator top way back here that was on the uh, 25th so a couple of days ago and the reason why it did show up on my uh, screen uh, out there we were just trying to look at the uh, current signals but you can see a bunch of support here you see the bullish reversal candles down in this area where it's traded into so you do know that bulls are trying to support the uh, Russell 2000, which is really what the signal is coming from on the daily time frame, at least with regard to where its profiles are present out there. Okay, so what else do we know? Yeah, I like to understand market conditions. What's the market breadth like? Really important to understand market breadth. So here we can take a look at the, uh, well, this is the short-term time frame for the S&P 500. And right now, we're, at, we're taking a look at the ES Mini, the 30-minute time frame chart showing its topping signal here. Right now, what we know, there's 148 constituents, components of si inside the S&P 500 uh, that are trading above the top of their profile. So above the top says you're above resistance. 
Below the profile, you've got 193. So the market breadth on a 30 minute time frame is still struggling inside of the S&P 500 or by the ES mini that we can take a look at. We have seen a little bit of a bounce since we came on the air at, at 809. But here in the ES mini, price has got to take out its green line. So it's just a counter trend rally so far to the 3476 level. That's Stevie's oscillator and change line. If price closes above that, Price will go ahead and target its recent highs out there. And if it can take out that prior high, you will know that it was a topping pattern. And a failed topping pattern would be bullish. And so you would expect and you would anticipate that price would continue to move higher. But right now, it's trading in between support and resistance. So you've got a neutral signal out there. Now, it's 826 in the morning. You're going to be looking at this at 126 in the afternoon. And you'll be able to take a look at those two things, see where the ES Mini was trading, and then try to figure it out. Here's what we know, folks, at this stage of the game here. <clears throat> The NQ, probably the most important instrument to watch today. Yesterday was a TD9 count top. That says, and it was the bar following bar number nine, that says if the NQ begins trading above 12, 0150, and closes above that, that is a super uber strong bullish message. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned for the next half hour. Tommy Jr. will take you on home. And uh, we'll be back to normal programming tomorrow and have a terrific thirsty Thursday. Take care, folks.